used Confucius Institutes to push propaganda all over the world. The U.S. finally woke up to the threat and forced many Confucius Institutes to close down. But they didn't actually go away. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. You know, sometimes I hate being right. Like that time I said it was literally raining cats and dogs outside. What a confusing, sad mess. Or when I said Confucius Institutes would close down, but then come back under a new name. What's to stop them from changing the Confucius Institutes so we have no choice but to put them back in our universities? And now that the party has extended its control over Hong Kong, I know what they're going to do. Goodbye Confucius Institute. Hello Bruce Lee Institute. Well, Confucius Institutes are coming back under a new name. The same terrible product. Kind of like when IHOP tried rebranding itself as the International House of Burgers. You're not fooling anyone, IHOP. Confucius Institutes are Chinese government-funded programs that partner with a foreign university to promote Chinese culture and language. Oh, and, of course, Chinese communist propaganda. A report by the National Association of Scholars found that of the 118 Confucius Institutes that were in the U.S., 104 have closed or are in the process of closing. But of those 104, 64 schools have opened a new Confucius Institute-like program. Here's one of the authors of that report. At least 58 maintained a very close relationship with a Chinese university that had been their partner. And a handful, at least five, were so loath to close their Confucius Institute that they went out and recruited a new host for it so that the Confucius Institute didn't close, it just changed locations. In fact, the single most popular reason that colleges and universities give when they close a Confucius Institute is that they're going to replace it with another Chinese partnership. Do we never learn? This would be like if Jack in the Box was closed by the health department and a month later a new restaurant called Back in the Jocks was opened. Not suspicious at all. According to the report's authors, the public has learned. It's the school administrators who haven't. And they should have known because there were some pretty big red flags right from the beginning. You know, besides this one. Like Confucius Institute's putting confidentiality clauses in their contracts. If they're so benign, why can't they be made public? The answer, of course, is that they're not benign. In 2009, Li Chong Chun, then the head of propaganda for the CCP, called Confucius Institutes an important part of China's overseas propaganda setup. That's why a lot of people see Confucius Institutes as a Trojan horse. In exchange for teaching Chinese language and culture, the Communist Party gets to promote its propaganda to a captive audience. Probably should have been obvious when the first expressions they taught in Chinese were, Hello, what's your name? And down with Western imperialists. The deal with Confucius Institutes was that colleges and universities provided the space. The Chinese government paid for the teachers and the materials. Oh, and did I mention free trips to China? You see administrators going to China, getting gifts, building relationships, uh, you know, signing deals. I'm sure those trips were just to foster a better cultural understanding, and not in any way to influence administrators. It's kind of like when a student gives their teacher an Apple, iPhone. Not a bribe at all. As Confucius Institutes spread throughout the early 2000s, people became more and more concerned about their influence in higher education. In 2018, Christopher Wray said the FBI was investigating. Um, do you share concerns about Confucius Institutes as a tool of that whole of society effort and as a way to exploit the sort of naive view among some in the academic circles about what the purpose of these institutes could be? Uh, uh, we do share concerns about the Confucius Institutes. It is something that we're watching warily uh, and in certain instances have developed, you know, appropriate investigative steps. Also in 2018, an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act forced schools to choose between Pentagon funding and Confucius Institutes. I don't know, does Pentagon funding get you free trips to China? 
only for building relationships, of course. In 2020, the State Department designated Confucius Institutes as foreign missions of the Chinese government. Then there were some high-profile cases that showed just how much of the Confucius Institutes were tied to the Chinese government. A woman who practices Falun Gong, which is banned in China, said she had to declare that she wouldn't practice Falun Gong. That was on a hiring form for a Confucius Institute in Canada. The Confucius Institute even published a stipulation in English on its main website stating that teachers at the institutes must have no record of participation in Falun Gong. In another case, China tried to get Stanford University to sign a $4 million contract with the agreement that one of the professors it was funding wouldn't talk about Tibet. Stanford said no and walked away from the deal. And there have been reports that Confucius Institutes have worked behind the scenes to quash visits by the Dalai Lama. So with all that public scrutiny, schools wanted to distance themselves from Confucius Institutes, and many ended their contracts. That was a good thing, but it was only a first step. After the break, I'll tell you what the Confucius Institutes did instead. Welcome back. Confucius Institutes have developed something of a reputation in the U.S. A reputation for being a Trojan horse of the Communist Party. To avoid scrutiny, Confucius Institutes are changing their names, shape-shifting, and going underground. It's like when a canceled comedian tries making a comeback by playing at smaller clubs. I see you kill Bosby. According to the National Association of Scholars, institutions with shuttered Confucius Institutes have entered new sister university agreements with Chinese universities, established new centers closely modeled on defunct Confucius Institutes, and even continue to receive funding from the same Chinese government agencies that funded the Confucius Institutes. Of the 104 Confucius Institutes that have shut down, the report said they couldn't find a single case where it was clear that the school had cut ties with China completely. In some ways, this shape-shifting has made China's influence harder to track. Instead of just one organization under a single name, the new programs are all different. You cut off one head and two more grow in its place. If you're wondering why I think the Chinese Communist Party are the bad guys, it's because they literally act like Hydra. Even the Chinese government agency that used to run Confucius Institutes has changed its name. And not to the Bruce Lee Institute. It's so much worse. They're using a bunch of boring names and acronyms so that keeping track of them all just feels exhausting. The Chinese Language Council International used to be in charge of the Confucius Institutes. It's now called the Center for Language Exchange and Cooperation, or CLEC. What a boring, useless name change. That would be like if a Jim Johnson changed his name to John Jimson. Ha! They'll never find me now. CLEC now runs the programs that replaced Confucius Institutes. CLEC spun off a nonprofit called the Chinese International Education Foundation, or CIEF, which now handles the Confucius Institutes. Even the Asia Society, a US based nonprofit that has been promoting Confucius classrooms, changed its program name. It used to be called the Confucius Classrooms Network, but has since changed it to Chinese Language Partner Network. Speaking of Confucius classrooms, that's another way Confucius Institutes live on. Confucius classrooms work with elementary through high school students, and there's about 500 of them still operating in the U.S. Confucius classrooms are essentially the same as Confucius Institutes, but for younger kids instead of college students, because you're never too young to learn how to say, down with Western imperialists. If for whatever reason, Confucius classrooms haven't received the same level of scrutiny. The National Association of Scholars has urged the federal government to investigate them, though. In 2020, the Secretaries of State and Education wrote a letter to school administrators alerting them to the risks of hosting a Chinese language program, but it stopped short of taking any action to stop their spread. There has been action taken on the state level. Last year, for example, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed legislation that would ban any Florida school from entering into contracts with a foreign adversary, including China. The legislation also increased reporting requirements for any foreign funding in schools. Last year, the U.S. Senate also passed a bill called the Confucius Act that would have given American schools more control over Confucius Institutes. It also tried to increase transparency from foreign sources in higher education. That bill never passed the House, so it never became law. And maybe that's a good thing, because like I said, Confucius Institutes aren't the real problem anymore. 
It's the boring Hydra replacing them that's the real threat. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a China Uncensored viewer who's part of the 50 Cent Army. That's a group of fans who directly support us through Patreon or Locals. Richard Wahlberg asks, Dear CU, I've heard there's a Confucius revival going on in China. Do you think the CCP will try to crush it or co-opt it as a rallying point against Western globalism? Well, Richard, a true Confucius revival will never succeed under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party. On one hand, the party wants to use certain elements of Confucianism, like loyalty, hierarchy, and the view that the ruler has the mandate of heaven. But Confucianism also has other elements which can be a serious threat, like the emperor is supposed to rule based on benevolence and not coercion, or that people must speak the truth. You won't hear any talk of that at the Confucius Institute. So no, there will never be a true Confucius revival while the Communist Party rules China. Anything under the label of Confucius is just co-opting the name, not true Confucian principles. And sadly, that means there will never be a true Bruce Lee revival either. Thanks for your question, Richard. Thank you to everyone who supports the show. Be like Richard and support China Uncensored by going to patreon.com slash China Uncensored and contributing a dollar or more per episode. As one of the perks, you can ask me questions that I'll answer on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored. Thank you.